Hello and welcome. It is 6.15 p.m. Cameroon time in Douala and time for the news in English on Canal de International. First up, the headlines. The suspect currently under detention is accused of systematically biting off the flesh of children in her neighborhood. And cases of kidnapping surge across northern Cameroon where law enforcement officers say they have documented hundreds of instances since the start of the year. In the majority of cases, the kidnappers demand ransom payments for the release of their captives. And they way beyond Cameroon in Tanzania. The authorities say they are successfully taming flares of flames that started spreading on the continent's highest geographical peak, the Kilimanjaro, on Friday. Those were top stories, developments in a jiffy. Thanks once again for the privilege of your company. We kickstart tonight's edition on a rather freaky note because, believe it or not, there are growing indications that cannibalism could be silently gaining grounds across Cameroon. Here's the story of a woman in Douala who has, according to her neighbor's narratives, nurtured the strange habit of biting off the flesh of children in her neighborhood. D. Morin. These images tell the story of four children who are being maltreated and subjected to all forms of dejection. They are beaten, isolated and even deprived of food by someone considered to be a benefactor. The children, all below four years, have been subjected to the pain and misery for close to two years. Accounts from neighbors to the ladies Bona Musadi residents in Douala see the woman in question stuffs the mouths of the kids with pieces of cloth, tied their hands to the back before beating them. She at times bites her victims, neighbors see. C'est ma voisine la plus proche qui torture les enfants depuis plusieurs années. She is my closest neighbor. She has been torturing the children for many years now. So the children are as small as two years. She was always beating and maltreating the children, but were never away. On the day when she traveled, the children came out to play with the others, and they saw bites on their body. She would stuff their mouths with pieces of cloth. That's why they could hardly scream. The children were not properly fed, go to school on an empty stomach, and will have to return and wait. The accused, a teacher by profession, does not have a child of her own. She begs for forgiveness, but pretends to be raising the kids, in her words, the proper way. It was not my intention to maltreat the children. Anger sometimes push us to commit crimes. I'm not a blood sucker. I was simply trying to bring up the kids the right way. Nebels have twice reported the case to security forces, yet she regains freedom and continues to act with impunity. We are told law enforcement agencies had asked for amicable each time the lady was reported for child abuse. Wonders, they say, shall never end for as long as we live. Now, on to something much more jovial, because the Catholic Church community in Cameroon is heaving huge sighs of relief, of course, following the release of nine persons who were abducted about a month ago at Nchang, that's near Mamfe in the southwest region of Cameroon. Kejan Henry Atembe up next says that the men and women of God went through veritable trials and tribulations. His report. 
The Bishop of Manfred Diocese, Alicia Fondong, has called on the Christians to pray a decade of rosary in thanksgiving for the civil release of adopted priest Noon and Lake Faithful of the St. Mary Catholic Church in Chang, carried away by separatist armed men one month ago. In a release sent to all clergy, lay faithful and institutions, Bishop Aloysius Fondong expressed sincere gratitude to all those who joined their collective efforts in praying for the release of the children of God. The abductees were released on Sunday, October 23, 2022. When the Vatican got news of the kidnapped Catholics in southwest of Cameroon, Pope Francis equally appealed for their release, joining his voice with that of the bishops. The release of the abducted priest, a sister of God, a catechist cook, and a 15-year-old girl comes on the heels of a video on social media in which the desolately looking captives pleaded with all and sundry to come to their rescue. It is, however, unclear how the captives regain their freedom. But the church has confirmed that no ransom was ever paid to secure their release. Now elsewhere and on the same beat, we usher you up to the northern parts of Cameroon and precisely to Boro in the Adamawa region, where kidnappings for ransom have become rampant. In the following story, you hear about Monique. That's a woman, the mother of a five-year-old boy who was kidnapped recently. She spent a total three weeks in captivity until her husband was forced to cough up millions worth of francs to secure their release. Here's Ndi Morin. Monique is now free from the hands of her kidnappers after spending close to three weeks in captivity. Her husband had to pay ransom worth millions of francs CFE to save his wife and that of their five-year-old child. He asked us to pay 40 million francs CFE for my wife and 30 million francs CFE as ransom for my child. Monique's husband is still keeping the bullet after abductors used on that fateful day. They shot twice. They had to break the door and we surrendered. Serbia village has been deserted due to the rising wave of kidnapping. A majority of the population has moved out of the village to other areas for safety. Even teachers of the lone primary school in the area are worried on the future of the children trapped by insecurity. The rising rates of kidnappings have worried the mayor of Tuburu, a town located a dozen kilometers away from Bab Lamdra village. He assures the population of their security by seas, they must denounce and collaborate with defense forces. This a similar atmosphere at Gazawa, another neighboring village. This man had to sell all his land and proceeds from his farms to save the wife from the hands of kidnappers. Authorities have called on the population not to easily fall to the caprices of kidnappers by paying ransoms, but rather denounce Inhabitants say they have no choice but to act fast and save lives. We stay in the northern parts of Cameroon because about one year ago, inter-tribal clashes between headsmen, fishermen and farmers of large thousands of Cameroonians residing in those parts to escape into neighboring Chad. With the situation having considerably calmed down now, thousands are retracing their tracks back home. But in the following report, Ambo Gladys tells us that they're now coming to very comfortable situations where they left in the first place. From the 40,000 Cameroonians who fled to Chad 10 months ago as a result of the inter-tribal conflict between the Hidas, farmers and fishermen in the Logo Nashari division in the far north region, the condition of 12,000 of them who have returned to their communities is preoccupying. We work also to provide different types of material assistance, whether it is shelter or to rebuild communities. But a very important activity in this area has been to sort of bring back the communities, to work on social cohesion, to sit down in the communities, bring the different parties together and talk about what has happened and create that environment which allows for people to come back in safety and in security. Nigerian refugees who continue to flee from Boko Haram attacks and flood victims of localities in Kuseri are equally in dire needs of humanitarian assistance. The goal is to give people a start when they return to their homes. So helping people in places of displacement, helping people come home. 
With an improvement of the security situation in the area, the women and children have been cautioned on the importance of living together. We have warned the women and the children, reminding them of the conflicts between the Muslims and Arab Shwas, emphasizing on the need to live in peace and to report cases of those who dare to cause problems. The United Nations High Commission for Refugees is ready to facilitate their integration by supporting government's efforts in response to humanitarian crisis. Now let's crisscross the country back down to the northwest region of Cameroon, where the government continues to rearrange and reinforce security dispositions with the fresh commissioning into office of two senior officers of the National Gendarmerie. We gather that both men have been handed firm instructions on how to deal with troublemakers in those parts of the country. Sheriff Fasale with field reports from Annie Collins, Abameda Bureau Chief. Appointed by the Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces and the Minister of Defense respectively, two senior military officials of the National Gendarmerie have been installed into their functions in Bamenda. Lieutenant Colonel Alobwede Mwabe Peter recently took over command as the Territorial Group Commander for Mazam in Bamenda by the Northwest Legion, Commander of the Gendarmerie. The Commander of the Territorial Gendarmerie Group, Bamenda, Major or Lieutenant Colonel Alobwede Mwambe Peter, here present. During the same ceremony at the Senior Divisional Officer Kodiat at Upstation, Captain Zimba Jean-Pierre was commissioned as the Mobile Squadron No. 90 Commander with competence across the Northwest region. Both men have been told to accumulate their academic 18 and 34 years professional experience obtained both home and abroad to bring their own contributions in pacifying the crisis-ridden region, highly characterized today by hostage takings. Double your efforts to the return of normalcy, if possible, before this year ends. Lieutenant Colonel Alobwede Mwabe Peter and Captain Dimba Jean Pierre replaced Major Onana Conrad and Idrissu Buba, who moved to the Second Gendarmerie Region in Douala and the Northwest Gendarmerie Legion in Bamenda. Now, members of the CIMAC Interministerial Council are voicing the need for the institution of strong guidelines to ensure profitable and long-lasting trading links within the sub-region. Meeting at their 38th ordinary session, which opened this afternoon in the capital, Yaoundé, they brainstormed on ways to overcome security and protectionism challenges in the sub-region. Here's Hyacinth Chia. At the center of discussion during this 38th ordinary session of the Council of Ministers of the Economic Union for Central Africa is budget examination and adoption for the year 2023, the review of common axes and guidelines for member states. The session shall process and adopt different texts on custom affairs, texts on durable industrialization of wood and the functioning of security dispositions within the corridors of the concerned states. The session is also geared towards seeking and adopting common strategies to boost trade within the CEMAC sub-region. We are reinforcing our institutional dispositions to ameliorate trade and uplift the industrialization and create the environment for proper management of the forest to fight against climate change. With barely a few days to the holding of the COP27 in Egypt, the members underline the priority of creating conditions to preserve the environment. Now we quickly take you beyond Camus borders to Tanzania, where the authorities out there say they are successfully taming wild flames after a fire broke out on the Mount Kilimanjaro on Friday. The exact cause of the inferno remains to be established, but accusing fingers are already rising in the direction of poachers and tourists. It is the second biggest outbreak of fire on that mountain since 2020. Here's Stephanie Chin. 
Tanzanian authorities say a fire on Mount Kilimanjaro has been brought under control after flames burnt Africa's tallest mountain for more than 24 hours. The blaze began on Friday evening near the Karanga site used by climbers ascending the famous peak at about 4,000 meters altitude on its south side. We are saddened by the news that our man's Kilimanjaro is on fire again. The source of fire is still unknown, but we are sure it was caused by human activities. And that can either be due to extraction of honey by the locals, or the fire might have been caused by illegal poachers. Late on Sunday, a government statement announced that the fire had, to a large extent, been extinguished. The blaze left no victims in the tourist hotspot and UNESCO World Heritage Site in northeastern Tanzania, where tens of thousands of climbers flock each year to conquer its snow-capped peak. Hundreds of people, including firefighters, national park staff and civilians were mobilized to fight the flames that were fanned by a strong wind. Social media footage on Saturday showed huge flames consuming vegetation and bushes and giving off grey smoke. We thank God that no one has been harmed by this fire. All our guests, tourists who were on top of the mountain are back down safe. We want to assure all Tanzanians that everything is under control, even if the fire is still continuing. But we have managed to control the fire to a great extent, so there is less harm for now. The cause remains unknown, but environmentalists suspect human activity, indicating that climbers, illegal poachers or honey hunters may have started it carelessly. Stephanie Chin there replacing the lead on our first edition of the News in English on Canal de International for the week. More news at 1950 with Alan Gisle Kanga. But up next and right after me, Mark Tromo is coming up with a build up to the 2022 World Cup in Qatar on the debrief. Catch you same time, same place tomorrow. Bye bye.